Welcome friends. Welcome to another Word of Gourd. Today we're doing something a little different um, as it's uh, Christmas or it's just past Christmas and uh, the Christ Spirit has uh, moved through the planet as it always does but it seems to have more force at Christmas time. Perhaps tradition, perhaps practice, perhaps expectation. Could be many reasons. But at this time I'd like to uh, bring up the piece of news that uh, my channel book, Jesus and the Christ, which has been available for oh, a number of years as an e-book, is now available as a print book. from Amazon Create Space. And um, by way of an introduction to those of you who may not know about it, all my talk of the afterlife and uh, reincarnation and whatnot, um, around 2007, I think this was a uh, small book was channeled. And um, here's a couple of sections which I think might be uh, appropriate for this time of year and um, useful to you in your meditations. This one is uh, from Jesus. It's called The Second Coming. For almost as long as I have been physically absent from your earth plane, Disciples and adherents have been prophesying my imminent return. For millennia, groups have gathered around various charismatic preachers and readied themselves apart from the mainstream for my glorious re-entry and subsequent shepherding of the faithful to their eternal reward. That these groups have always been disappointed in their fervor is not news to you. But it is worth recalling as you consider the various claims currently being made about my return. Various raptures and ascensions abound. I am not suggesting that you doubt the sincerity of these prophets. For most part, they are genuinely devoted to the redemption and enlightenment of all mankind and seek only to serve where they perceive a suitable opening. Beings supposed to be myself and Maitreya have been cited throughout the globe at various gatherings and public situations. This is true. We come and go, testing the waters and causing ripples of recognition. As we probe the millions of souls inhabiting the various planes of form, many of whom care not for the mystique or the promise of our execution of the divine plan, we are watching to assess the level of acceptance of the Christ energy among you. Do you act as though all men were actually your brothers and deserving of your compassion and charity? Or are you paying lip service to publicly approved ideals while feathering your nest in enviable luxury and flattering your ego with the tributes of vanity. Do you truly forgive those who trespass against you, or do you placate wounds with the promise of vengeance? Do you remember that I, that divine spark of divinity, exists within your enemy, and, as is said, in the least among you? While we await the rising of this Christ energy among you to a level which we consider appropriate and useful for the mass acceptance of our public emergence, we want you to understand that we do not hold you responsible for the misleading propaganda of your elected officials. Spiritual wickedness in high places has always been a factor in the political and economic life of planet Earth and it is only the easy accessibility of information via the omnipresent media which makes it seem more prevalent. That wealth is generated and power accrued through deceit as well as hard work is no secret. 
and those who would piously dictate from the fortress of loudly proclaimed virtue have less credibility than ever. What is perhaps not so obvious is that as you open yourself more and more to the Christ energies, not only does your heart grow to embrace all men and their sufferings, but your intuition sharpens and discernment, once so clouded with racial, religious and social prejudice, grows rapidly in its acuity. Greed, deceit and callous manipulation become as obvious as Pinocchio's growing nose. So many of you are educated and affluent now. But we know you feel helpless in the face of political depravity and worldwide suffering and wonder if anything that you attempt is in any way useful. We, Maitreya, myself, and the other so-called masters, would suggest that all your efforts be fueled with unconditional love, the kind that has no expectations of moral reward for efforts expended. For opening yourself to that boundless love does more than for the planet than you would ever suspect. Do not be fooled by those well-meaning reformers who insist that only practical aid and development endeavors are in any way useful, for their high-minded insistence can blind you to the subtler effects of the slowly raised vibration level of the physical plane. The more you use unconditional love as your fuel and vehicle of transformation, the more you anchor the light of love and understanding on the planes. It is not enough that this cosmic boost be discovered to be emanating from some galactic central source. It needs to be anchored by willing practitioners functioning in physical bodies. As I once gave my precious life to the planet, that it be redeemed from the deeper levels of darkness. So you can all give your precious identities to the work of love. Love without object or promise of return. That the planet and all its sentient entities be further raised toward the radiance which beckons and embraces. The second coming is actually the one which blooms from the soil of your individual heart and is watered by the smiles and laughter of those you embrace with its glow. Um, Maitreya. Uh, the Centaur book was channeled in the same few months, 2006, 2007, I can't quite remember. But not that that matters, it's eternal. But at this time of religious renewal of the Christian faith, and uh, we recognize that there are other times in the calendar year where other faiths are renewed by millions. Maitreya has this to say on the topic why religions are created. <clears throat> it is perhaps necessary in these times of radical transformation in the spiritualities lived by many peoples of earth to restate the brotherhood's view of such matters. We, of course, are deeply concerned with the guidance of the religious impulse in humanity. Some of us have watched the entire process of evolution on the planet and are well aware of the challenges and pitfalls involved in such an undertaking. Whether it's primitive man convinced he must placate an angry, vengeful deity with the blood of innocence, or the citizens subjected to the power mongering of priesthoods defending their turf against all comers, or the modern atheist who takes refuge in blatant materialism and sardonic humor, or the humanists who bravely create ethical systems of behavior independent of the illusion of supervising creator deities. We are prepared to work with whatever baggage 
each individual or group brings to the table. We aim to assist you on the upward spiral of understanding in any way we can. Religions are planned and brought into being by various members of the Brotherhood acting as prophets and messiahs. Each prophet is, as you say, the front man for a behind-the-scenes organization planning and directing the enterprise, usually, but not always, from the spirit planes. In this planning, the evolutionary stage of each tribe and society affected is carefully taken into consideration. Those who are to be lifted up are prudently assessed for their fears, prejudices, and tractability, and whatever belief system enraptures them is used as a platform from which to launch a more enlightened worldview. The relative success of these efforts is not only a great challenge to engineer, but also exceedingly difficult to ascertain in the short term. Sometimes centuries are required before the prospects of achievement can be realistically measured. And even then, societies are in such flux with contradictory impulses playing out their effects in all fields of endeavor, we can only continue in trust rather than knowledge. Human frailty and blindness, aided and abetted by the Dark Brothers opposing the gradual liberation of the evolutionary impulse, can mire us in apparently futility if we but falter in our faith for a moment. The conflict, seemingly endless from your viewpoint, between the religions and their claims of exclusivity, was, of course, anticipated by us and factored into our planning. While we always strive to encourage resolution and synthesis between opposing viewpoints, the Dark Brothers always fuel the drives to self-righteousness, prideful ambition, and power lusts. Together we provide an ample supply for all man's growth potential. All the paths which unfold before his desire and aspiration are sustained by our efforts. And the principle of free will enshrined in the original planetary enterprise is upheld without question for as long as the illusion of time requires sustaining. In your current atmosphere of religious intolerance and karmic resentments, Many of humanity's long smoldering spiritual issues have caught fire. We see these conflagrations extinguished through the exercise of love, compassion, and mercy. In fact, that is the only way they will be extinguished. And in doing so, we see long lost brothers embracing, sisters sharing in their emancipation and children growing into a truth that is shared by all. Only by merging your devotions and sharing your wealth will true brotherhood be realized and the consciousness of God felt by all. Only by submerging your differences in a sea of oneness will the illusion of separation be discarded. And by then, the I that is one of Maitreya's me's, will not only walk amongst you, but be recognized as having been a fellow traveler all along. Jesus and the Christ. There's lots more there. And perhaps we'll read from it again. If the... Uh, receptive disrequired is displayed <laughs> anyway friends i hope this uh christmas season has been uh joyful and serene and happy for you all in this world of uh turmoil deceit and well let's face it ruthless cruelty um, we can but um, share love amongst our friends and family and uh, pray that others uh, will also do so. 
And in saying that, I wish you farewell for now.